Okay, in this video I'm going to do three examples, all of them which involve a technique known as substitution. We use an algebraic substitution to make the integral simpler, to change it from a form that's unfamiliar into a form that's familiar, into something that we know how to solve. And in this first example we're told to integrate sine x over cosine x. And we can do this with a substitution, and here's the substitution. I'm going to introduce a new variable, and it's very common to call this variable u, and I'm going to say u is equal to cosine x. Well, if u is equal to cosine x, and that's right down there, I see that, uh, if u is equal to cosine x, then du dx has to be the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. Or we could say that du is equal to negative sine x dx. Now take that fact and look back at the original integral. Here's u in the denominator and look what's up top. This sine x dx right up there, that's negative du right there. So I have u down there in the denominator and the numerator is negative du. So I can rewrite my original integral in terms of u. So I'm going to write it like this. This is going to equal negative du over u. I'm just going to put the negative sign out front and write it as negative 1 over u du. And we know that this negative sign is just a multiplier of negative 1. So we can just write this as negative of the integral of 1 over u du. And this is something we know how to do. We know that the integral of 1 over u is the natural log of u. So I'm going to write negative natural log of u is my answer. But my original integral was stated in terms of x, so I need to put this in terms of x, and that's easy to do because I know that u was defined as cosine of x. So I can write this as negative natural log of cosine of x, and I'm done. And I should put in my plus c, but that's my answer. The integral of sine over cosine, I was able to change that into a form that's familiar, and I did that using a substitution. Now, here's the clue that a substitution is a good way to go on a problem like this. If I look back at my original integral, one of the things I notice is that I have uh, one function and its derivative together. So you see here, I have um, a sine x, and the derivative of that is the cosine. Or better yet, I have the cosine, and the derivative of that is the sine, or really the sine with a constant multiplier, in this case just a negative 1. But then my dx is in there also. So I have one function, and then I have its derivative along with the differential quantity up there. Having one function and its derivative together in my integrand here is the clue that a substitution will be a handy way to approach this problem. And this technique is sometimes called u substitution because it's common to let the variable be u that we use to do the substitution with. It could be any variable, but it's commonly u, some other function, which we call u, and it's often called u substitution for that reason. And then one thing you may have noticed here that we just did is sine over cosine is tangent. So we just integrated the tangent function, and there it is the negative natural log of cosine x. And that's not something that I would have guessed. If someone were to ask me what the integral of the tangent function was, I would not at all think it was obvious that it would be the negative natural log of the cosine. Now if that's obvious to you, then that's great. Then you have a better intuitive grasp of this than me. But I do know that this is true, because here's the proof right here. I've done a nice little, little integration using a u substitution. All right, let's do a couple more. Okay, here we have the integral of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x dx. And watch this. I'm going to let u equal x squared plus 2x. And you might be thinking, how in the world did you know to do that? Well, one, a little bit of practice helps with this. But here, if you, if you think about this and you see x squared plus 2x, and you imagine taking the derivative of that, so du dx is going to be the derivative of x squared plus 2x, which is just 2x plus 2, that is the same thing that I have up in the numerator, only different by a constant multiplier. 
So let's write this. du is equal to 2x plus 2 and put that in parentheses dx. Or if you wanted to you could factor out the 2 and write it as 2x plus 1 dx. And this right here, this x plus 1 dx, we see explicitly right up here, x plus 1 dx. So what we have up here in the numerator, x plus 1 dx, is half of du. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually circle this and make a note. x plus 1 dx, that is half of du. And then down on the bottom, the x squared plus 2x, that is u. So my original integral has one-half du in the numerator and u in the denominator. So it can be rewritten as the integral of one-half times one over u times du. And the one-half can be brought out front. And so we just have the integral of one over u du, which we know how to solve. That is the natural log of u. So this is one-half times the natural log of u plus c. And again, we want to put this in terms of x, so we substitute back in. u is x squared plus 2x. So this, our answer becomes 1 half of the natural log of x squared plus 2x plus c. Okay, and let's do one more. Okay, here I have the integral of the natural log of x squared over x dx. And the substitution I'll use here is to let u equal the natural log of x. And if I do that, then du dx is going to be 1 over x. So in other words, du will have to be 1 over x dx. And I see that right here. Here's my 1 over x and my dx. 1 over x dx is du. And if u is equal to ln of x, well, here it is, the natural log of x squared. So up top there, I have u squared. So my integral becomes the integral of u squared du. And that's easy to integrate. That's simply u cubed over 3 by the power rule for integrals. And then we substitute back in. u cubed is the natural log of x cubed. So I'll write that, natural log of x cubed over 3 plus c. And just take note that some people would write it like this. They would say ln cubed x over 3 plus c. Although I prefer this notation, both are commonly used. Now this technique of u substitution is useful in other cases. It doesn't only show up when we're differentiating logarithms. And it, and it doesn't always turn out to be an integral involving logarithms. It's a, it's a general technique that's useful in a lot of situations. But the examples here all involve logarithms because that's the current topic.